Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. Lately, this type of content has absolutely been suppressed. So I wanted to start off today by thanking everybody who is watching now. I know it's not ending up in everybody's news feed, so if you're not seeing this all the time, make sure you hit that little bell notification. But today, we're going to be talking about New York and the number of gun confiscations which has skyrocketed in the past, well, less than a year. The, the numbers are going to shock you, so let's go ahead and talk about what's going on. This channel is proud to be sponsored by the USCCA. If you carry for your own protection, you need a USCCA membership. With your membership, you get that self-defense liability, which is absolutely priceless. So if you are interested, check out the link in the description box. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's go and talk about what's going on here. Now, the first thing I want to say is the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, is absolutely losing it over the fact that the Supreme Court has decided to hear the Rahimi case, which deals directly with what we're going to be talking about today. It could have a potential impact on New York's confiscation scheme, and they absolutely love their confiscation. The numbers will prove that. So the Rahimi case deals with uh, restraining orders and stuff and whether or not something like that should have an effect on whether or not you can have your Second Amendment rights. Uh, it's a much more complicated case, but just putting it simply, that's pretty much what it's about. Well, Kathy Hochul and their, what I call, confiscation laws, because, you know, red flag laws is just a, kind of a, a light way of putting it, right? It's, uh, it's not the full scope of what actually happens. But red flag laws in New York have increased so much that if you take a look prior to 2022, I mean, the entire time I think they've had these red flag laws, you're going to like 1,400 on average, you know, confiscations. Since October of 2022, you're looking at like 9,000 now. So the number has gone from maybe around 1,400 to 9,000. And the thing is that there are quite a few, I believe it's almost 5,000, which have become permanent. So what that means is they, they file an extreme risk protection order against you, an ERPO or a red flag, whatever you want to call it. And then that goes before a judge. The judge, you know, goes ahead and they, they grant it. So they just show up at your house, right? They just show up at your door. You don't even know that anything's going on. They come in, they confiscate all of your weapons, and then later on you can defend yourself. Well, uh, almost half of these cases have ended up with the person losing their rights completely. So we're talking about, you know, not just a temporary thing, but permanent. Now, like I said before, the numbers are astronomical. I actually had to stop and double check my numbers just to see if I got it right. So the 1,400 red flags that were issued in New York was over a two and a half year period. So the prior two and a half year period, you're looking at a total of 1,400. And in less than a year now, you're looking at 9,000. And the thing is, is that politicians in that state are basically touting that as a massive win. So basically, stepping on your constitutional rights and overstepping their boundaries is somehow a win to them. And that's something that you might want to think of, uh, you know, the next time you head out and you choose who you want to govern your state. Now, Rahimi, like I said before, has the potential to stop it, depending on how the Supreme Court writes their opinion. If the Supreme Court decides that they're going to very narrowly tailor their opinion, uh, just specifically about the, the issues that are involved in Rahimi, then it probably wouldn't have an effect on these, uh, you know, red flags. It probably wouldn't have that much effect at all. But if the opinion comes out and the opinion is much more broad in terms of, uh, you know, these protective orders and things like that, then yeah, it could have a direct effect across the entire country because it's the Supreme Court. It's not a circuit court the direct effect across the country on all of these red flags. So again, keep that in mind. That's, that's why that case is so big. Uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where I may not support the person who actually brought the lawsuit, but it, I support the fact that you shouldn't have your rights taken away for something that is uh, a misdemeanor or actually not even chargeable offense at all. So anyway, I want to let you guys know about that. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.